Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hobart Bay Sports Network. I am your host Justin Winter and today we shall see the Hobart Bay Ones take on the Indiana Hoosiers and this should be an interesting matchup. You look at their running back Devine Redding, he's very fast for a running back and he's also very balanced in other areas as well. Solid back. Looking at their main wide receiver Simi Cobbs, he's got okay speed, not great for a wide receiver but he's definitely more possession based. And then you look at their defense, Rashard Fant. Okay, speed, much more of a coverage guy. 91 man coverage, 93 zone coverage. And you look at other news, Bubba West moves up to third string to get more playing time. Let's go down to the field now. We are here in Seattle, Washington, where the Hobart Bay Ones take on the Indiana Hoosiers. Hobart Bay is coming off of a... Good game, all things considered, against the number nine Washington Huskies. Indiana has yet to play a game, so we're going to find out how well Hobart Bay really does against some of these middle-tier teams. Last week, Hobart Bay lost 51-17, but they did make it a 10-point game in the third quarter. We're going to see if that promise and potential will come to light here against Indiana. Remember, Hobart Bay has that deal with the Washington Huskies where they get to use their stadium for two years while Washington is on the road or simply not playing for their home games. Indiana? Nope. Hobart Bay wins the coin toss. It's the second time they've won the coin toss this year. Hobart Bay has done really well with that. Here we go. Opening kickoff. Chase Brooks. Kicks it away, it's going to be caught at about the 6 yard line. Cobbs takes it out, has a seam, watch out, he's going, he's going, and that is going to be a touchdown for Indiana on the opening kickoff. That means Hobart Bay has now given up a touchdown within the first 15 seconds of the game, two games in a row. Simi Cogs, Cogs, Cobbs now has the longest kickoff return in NCAA history at 94 yards. Hobart Bay quickly gets themselves in a third down and 10 situation. Merker drops back, throws to the right, and it is caught by Dallas Ross. Breaks a tackle. He's down the sideline. Can he get there? Stiff arms a man, and he's down at the three-yard line. Dallas Ross, what a great catch by that man. And with that, he has more receipt receptions? receptions in the season than anyone else. First and goal for Hobart Bay. Of the strong formation, the handoff does not work whatsoever. Greg Gooch was right there. The line simply collapsed. It's going to be second down and goal now. Hobart Bay. Looks like they're coming out in the shotgun formation. Zach East is in at quarterback. It's a read option, and Zach East did not get any blocking help on the edge. His lineman only gave him a little gave the defender a little chip that did not help nearly enough and he gets tackled for a loss now it's third and goal can Hobart Bay put the ball in the end zone East is still in the game he throws and oh he had a man but he missed him that is some pretty poor accuracy and now the question is will Hobart Bay go for it or kick the field goal Looks like they're just going to kick the field goal. And no, it's a fake. East is there to throw, and he throws an interception to Thornton. He's going down the field. Can Weisbecker get him? Yes, he can. Oh, my goodness. Hobart Bay had first and goal at the three. They go back a yard, and then they throw an interception. Wow, that was a terrible way to start the game. And Indiana, well, they give the ball right back. Hobart Bay catches a break there. We'll see if they can do anything on this next drive as it is quickly a second down and 10. Merka rolling out to his right under pressure and he is hit. A loss of eight yards on the sack and Hobart Bay will not recover from that terrible sack. Indiana ball once again. First down. And Hobart Bay get another stop like they did last time. Lago, he's looking. He's going to scramble and he gets sacked. He's got a loss of six. Andrew Lago was not good decision right there. 
They do manage to get to a third and nine. He's looking for a pass. Fires deep and overthrows his man. That was a touchdown. But Zach East did the same thing, so can't really can't really judge him too much on that one. But they quickly get the ball back. Cobra Bay's offense is terrible. And here's Devine Redding, and he's fighting. He's fighting. Can he get there? No, they're going to mark him just short. Third and inches. Indiana, a hurry-up offense team. We're going to see if they can get Hobart Bay off guard. It's a blitz by Hobart Bay. It's a pass by Indiana, and that's an easy reception for Ricky Brookins. It's first down and goal, Indiana. They're going to keep the ball moving. The clock stops temporarily because of the first down. It's another run for Redding, and Redding powers in to the end zone. Indiana has a two-score lead here in the first quarter. Here's a studio update. The Wisconsin Badgers upset number six Alabama 20-17. to That could have huge playoff implications. Meanwhile, Hobart Bay is at 2nd and 15 on this first play of the second quarter. He's going to throw, and that's an interception by Thompson. Thompson, can he get the edge? No, he cuts to the inside and gets tackled at about the 2. If he stayed to the outside, he may have just gotten a touchdown. Instead, it's 1st and goal. Hobart Bay in the goal line formation. Indiana in goal line information. formation. And that's an easy touchdown for Indiana. Not good for Hobart Bay. They find themselves down three scores early in this second quarter. This kickoff to Dallas Ross. He takes it out right. Cuts outside. He has space. Can he go down the field? One man stiff arms him and manages to get to the Indiana side of the field. Not a bad kickoff return. Not bad at all. But Hobart Bay is going to need a lot more than just that return if they hope to get anything going if they want to make a comeback which I seriously doubt they will I will make an adjustment he's looking it's another pass throws over the middle he has Dallas Ross Dallas Ross with two great plays a good kick return and then a nice catch there gain of 12 Hobart Bay continues to drive down the field now out of the I formation here it's still a pass Merka fires to the side has Dallas Ross again and he's inside the five most catches in a game by anyone for Dallas Ross. Now Hobart Bay has first and goal at the five. They line up in the eye. Can they get the ball in? Hand off to Howell. He's fighting and he lost the football. Thompson of Indiana picks it up. And Hobart Bay turns the ball over for the third time. This is an absolute disaster for Hobart Bay. Twice now they've gotten inside the five and then turned the ball over. They need... Oh, man. This is terrible. Oh, and they gave away a uh, kickoff return for a touchdown, too. And here's Nati, and he has space. Is anyone going to catch him? I don't think they will. Indiana is going to go all the way 97 yards on a fullback dive. Wow. Tyler Nati, or Nady, however you pronounce it. New longest run in NCAA history. Indiana now leads 28 to nothing, and boy, it has been an ugly one for Hobart Bay. Here on third down, another interception. This time, Merka throws an interception, and Thompson just falls down right where he is. Merka, he's 4 of 9, 106 yards. I mean, it's not terrible, at least for the first half, but the turnovers will kill, and Indiana comes out for the first play after that turnover, and they can do some damage fairly easily. They're going to pass. Those over the middle, caught by Friend, and Friend, he was getting piggybacked there, but he still carries for 21 yards. And Indiana, nope, they're not going to slow down despite their giant lead. They're determined to score here. They'll probably score again in the half with how fast they're going. They don't let the clock run. 
Lego fires to the side and Smith was there but he went past the ball and Isaac James gets nine and a half yards on the screen now it's second and inches it's going to be an easy first down to get they're in the shotgun here down so close that's interesting and off to Redding, stiff arms a man and goes into the end zone. Hoosiers up 35 to zero. Now Hobart Bay, looks like they just wanna try and run out the clock on the half and Indiana will not let them. Oof, third down and five and you try to run, I guess you can't expect much else. But Hobart Bay, they just wanna get out of here right now. Indiana. It's going to fire deep. That's in the end zone, and it is caught by Isaac James. Indiana continues to pour it on Hobart Bay. Oh, the poor ones. It's 42-0. Indiana has the ball again, and it's still the first half. This is brutal. Legault fires to the side, and ooh, good play by Richard Gilliam, one of the few bright spots for Hobart Bay today. Now, that's not going to be nearly enough, because... You still have two more downs for Indiana to get 10 yards. And for this team, against this defense, that doesn't seem to be much of a problem. They're going to do a draw play to Devine Redding. And what do you know? He gets, what is that, 13 yards. Indiana is not stopped. There's no stopping them. Hobart Bay, they can't play run defense to save their lives, honestly. I mean, you look at all the blitzes they're sending, and they're still allowing like 100 yards in the half. It's now a pass, and that's a good catch for Cobbs, and he gets another first down for Indiana. The Hoosiers now call a timeout. They want another score after this drive, because they will score on this drive, barring a miracle. First down, 10. Shotgun formation once again. That rhymed. Friend is in motion. It's a run. It's a read option. Lego trucks a man and fights his way into the end zone. Indiana leads 49 to 0 at halftime. Oh my goodness. Against Washington, a much more talented team. Hobart Bay was down by only 17 against Indiana, they're down by 49. This is much more of what we expected last week when Hobart Bay faced Washington. But the main problem, I mean, obviously there's the defense. The defense is doing terribly, but the offense isn't helping them. The offense can't get anything going. They can't sustain a drive, and when they do sustain a drive, they just wind up turning the ball over at the goal line. I mean, that's exactly what's been happening for Hobart Bay. It's the turnovers that are killing, and that's why the defense looks so bad. The defense would be doing better if the offense could just keep them off the field. Instead, the... I mean, you look at the time of possession, yeah, Hobart Bay's got the grand majority of the time of possession, but that's because they're running the clock. Indiana, on the other hand, is running the ball down Hobart Bay's throat while getting in a healthy pass game right there. You should not be allowing 149 rush yards while only being able to get two rush yards in the half. Hobart Bay needs to make some serious changes. Despite that time of possession, their offense has not been good. They have that time of possession because they quickly allow scores and they can't sustain a drive. It's now first and 10, first play of the third quarter. We'll see if there's any improvement. Merka fires to the right. Good catch by Gio Saria. First down, Hobart Bay. Next play, here we are. They're out of the weak formation. It's a play action. Marka throws downfield, and that is intercepted by Dutra. That's the fifth turnover for Hobart Bay today. It's all fallen apart today. There's there's no hope. This this game is over. Everyone knows it. It's 49 to nothing. They're gonna run the ball. Looks like even Indiana knows it. Redding. He's still gonna fight for another first down, eleven yards. Even when, even when Indiana is trying to run the ball to run the clock out, Hobart Bay still can't stop him. It's still going to result in a score. Look at this. Redding up the middle. Breaks a tackle and fights to like the six-yard line. 
Hobart Bay can't defend them. And they need defense, apparently. Go figure. You need defense to win a game. Redding's in motion, so it's not a run. He throws, and Redding still gets the catch. What can't this man do? My goodness. They may as well put him in at quarterback, and he'd still probably go down the field and score a touchdown. He can run and catch. Why not just give him a passing touchdown as well? Hobart Bay now down 56 to nothing. Merka fires for Gio Saria. He tries to make him a miss. Breaks the tackle and gets a block. Saria down the sideline and he is into the end zone. Touchdown Hobart Bay. They will not be shut out. And that's about the brightest spot you're going to get today. That figures that they can't score whenever they get inside the 10 or the 5. But they can score off of one big play. Let's just fast forward down to Indiana's next possession where they're already goal to go. They're going to pass the ball. And that's a touchdown for Austin Doris. Makes it 63-7 to here in the fourth quarter. It's been a brutal game all around. Merka fires left. That's Gio Saria who beat the man. And he's going down the sideline. Can he? No. He cannot score another touchdown would have been great if he could but he still gets most receiving yards in a game 131 good for him it's now third and goal two yard line toss left to Howell and he got no blocking on that outside they allowed a defensive lineman maybe a linebacker to come through the line and tackle him at the side terrible blocking terrible terrible looks like they're going to go for it see if they can have points fires for sorry and he dropped the football he dropped the football that was a touchdown you can see that wasn't deflected okay maybe it was deflected but he had it and that's going to end the game folks 63 to 7 is your final score we expected this last week not this week instead hobart bay mixes up their performances personally i think it's more of a tempo thing Indiana was a hurry-up team who had a fair mix of run and pass. Washington was mm, a traditional huddle team that mostly ran, but did the, some passing as well. Well, Washington did kill Hobart Bay in the run game. Indiana did it faster, and because of that, they were able to get in more drives and score more points. Hobart Bay also doesn't help that Hobart Bay couldn't, you know, score when they got in the goal to go situations but I guess that's how it is with a team of rejects or at least nobodies most of these guys all but one are freshmen that's Zach East who isn't a freshman he threw multiple interceptions today as did Merka a 97 yard fullback dive it's all you need to know about Hobart Bay they gave up a 97 yard touchdown run on a fullback dive and they it's not like they had only three alignment. That was out of goal line. So, Gio Saria, he showed promise. Looks like he could handle himself in the future. But Hobart Bay is going to have to make some vast improvements if they want any chance of winning later on this season. I said last week I thought they could do it. Not so sure now. Anyway, we'll see. Stick around for the stats. Terrible day for Hobart Bay. Steve Merka had 50% passing, 256 yards, but both quarterbacks had three interceptions. Yeah. Rushing leader was Alex Howell with 25 yards on 15 attempts. That's 1.6 yards per carry, people. That ain't good. That's really, really not good. Receiving-wise, a great day for Hobart Bay. Gio Saria had 131 yards, and Dallas Ross had 100. So 200-plus yard receivers. That's very good for this team. Uh, Michael Weisbecker had two catches for 24. Daugherty had one for 19. And Alex Howell must have had a screen play that went for a loss. The tackle leader for Hobart Bay was Tyler Smith, the corner. He had six tackles, five of them alone. One attack. Kicking-wise, Chase Brooks did not have an attempt today. Neither did Griffin Oaks of Indiana. The Indiana pass attack was 10 for 17, 147 yards and 3 touchdowns. Could have had more, but they chose to run the ball because they could afford to run the ball. With 126 yards for Devine Redding and 119 for Tyler Natee, 
who had a 97-yard fullback dive, thank you very much. Andrew Lugo had 33 yards rushing as well. The receiving game wasn't stellar. Isaac James had 76 yards and three catches. Friend had 36 yards and two catches. It was very much a mediocre game for the Indiana receiving core. Defensively, their tackle leader was Robert McCray II. Four of those tackles were for loss. However, your interception leaders are Jamie Thompson and Chase Dutra with two picks each. Six picks on the game. Indiana scored 35 points in the second quarter. That's really all you need to know. That, that completely ended the game. There's no hope after that. Join us next week where Hobart Bay will take on Boston College and hopefully can get their act together. Boston College is one and one We will see you then. Have a nice day. Oh, and one more thing before you guys leave. Um, while this is the second game, I know it's a bit early. It's only the second game that I've put out, but I've already finished recording the entire first season, and that means I'm about to go into the off season. And because I'm about to go into the off season, I need your custom prospects. So I know it's a bit early, but I need you guys to submit your custom prospects if you want to get them in for season two. Please and thank you. Have a nice day.